Today we're going to look at being able to convert some um, trig equations into this form with um, r cos and r sine of theta plus or minus alpha. Now the reason we do this is that sometimes it allows us to simplify um, trig expressions or equations to make them a little easier to do. Now these aren't on your formula sheet, you do need to learn how to do this, but it's not very hard to extrapolate them from the formulae on your formula sheet, so I'll show you with an example here. So here we have, um, we know that sine theta plus alpha is equal to sine theta cos alpha plus cos alpha sine alpha, sorry cos theta sine alpha, and then if we put the r in front of it, it would just mean timesing the whole thing by r, so we get this expression. Now if we try this with an actual one, you might be able to see a little better of how this actually works. So 4 sine theta plus 3 cos theta, we're going to convert it into the r sine theta plus alpha form. So we know that that's the same as this, r brackets sine theta cos alpha plus cos theta sine alpha. And that would be the same as putting it into r sine theta plus alpha from that um, result that we've got just above it in the purple. Okay, so we equate coefficients, which would help us to work out what r and alpha need to be. So sine theta, on the left hand side is 4, and on the right hand side is r cos alpha. So those are the coefficients of sine theta. The coefficients of cos theta, on the left hand side we've got 3, and on the right is r sine alpha. Now thinking about what this means, you can think about it in terms of a right angle triangle where we've got this angle alpha. Now from sine alpha being 3 over r, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that would mean that the opposite had to be 3 in the hypotenuse r. The same with cos alpha, that's 4 over r, so that means the adjacent has to be 4. Now from there, you should be able to see fairly easily, we're going to go on and do Pythagoras to work out what r is. So in this case, r is 5. It doesn't always work out to a nice rounded number like that, but I've picked um, easy ones for this, this example. So now from there we can get that sine theta must be 3 over 5, so, sorry alpha, so um, alpha has to be 36.9 degrees just by doing the inverse of that. So now we have worked out our r value and alpha value, we can express this in the form that we want. So it would be 5 sine theta plus 36.9 degrees. Now we can generalise this with the following. So if we just put in terms A and B, then we get the, these results where R is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. Sine, theta will, sine alpha will always be B over R and sine al cos alpha will be A over R. And we can also do the same sort of process if we want it written in terms of cos instead of sine. So we'll do that exact same question, but this time we're writing it in terms of cos. So the cos expansion is the one that goes cos alpha, cos theta cos alpha plus sine theta sine alpha, and that would be able to give us r cos theta minus alpha. So that's using the compound angle formulae um, from your sheet and then it all gets multiplied by r. Okay, so equate the coefficients again. We've got cos theta would have a 3 on the left and r cos alpha on the right. Sine theta's got 4 on the left and r sine alpha on the right. And then from there, Thinking about our triangle, we can put the sides on as 4 and 3 again, in the same way that we did before. So again we've got r equals 5, sine alpha will be 4 over 5, so alpha is 53.1 degrees. So for this case we can write it as r cos theta minus alpha where r is 5 and alpha is 53.1 degrees. Okay, so putting these results in a generalised form looks like this. So here's the one with the cos that we just did, along with uh, the situations that make it possible. 
And here's the one for sine that we did first of all. So we put that all together as one result. Okay. Last example, we want to express sine theta minus 4 cos theta in the form r sine theta minus alpha. So we're looking for the one that's going to help us end up in terms of sine and with a minus in that side of that bracket for theta minus alpha. So it will be this one. Just reading that from our generalised result we just did. Uh, we know that r has to be 1 squared plus 4 squared since the coefficient of sine is 1 and the coefficient of cos is 4. So then we get r is the root of 17. To work out alpha, we use the fact that sine alpha equals um, b over r, which is 4 over root 17. We also could have used the fact that cos, um, cos alpha would have been 1 over root 17 to work it out that way as well. So now alpha is 75.9 degrees, therefore it, we can write, rewrite it as root 17 sine of theta minus 75.9 degrees. So this example is one that you're more likely to get. The ones we've looked at before um, had the angles being acute each time. Um, this one actually gives you a range that you need to consider. So just like solving trig equations, you'd look for all the solutions within a range. We're going to do the same with this one. So first of all, we want to express it in this form of cos. So there's the expansion. So we are making cos theta minus root 3 sine theta equal to that expansion. Now comparing the coefficients, we get these. So that our cos theta, we've got 1 on the right hand side and r cos alpha from the, uh, sorry, 1 on the left hand side, r cos alpha on the right hand side. And for sine theta, don't forget that that negative gets included as well. So it's negative root 3 is the coefficient of sine theta on the left hand side and r sine alpha on the right hand side. Uh, r is 2 and then we need to work out alpha. So starting with cos alpha equals a half we can then get alpha equals 60 and then look at our graph for the other roots. Between minus 180 and 180 we've got 60 and minus 60. And then from sine alpha being equal to minus root 3 over 2 we get alpha is negative 60 and then from the graph again we find what matches with that so we've also got minus 120 degrees. Okay so there's all the possible solutions for alpha but our alpha value has to satisfy both, both that cos alpha and sine alpha side so we're looking for what answer comes up in both of those lists so of course it's the minus 60 degrees here so alpha has to be minus 60 degrees so we can rewrite our whole thing as equal to 2 cos theta minus negative 60 degrees.